the cars, first for practice, then for qualifying. Some of the haulers looked a little different, sporting new sponsors and paint schemes. Others were immediately recognizable. The same with faces. Some were new, others familiar. But the same attitude was shared by all, get the car going as fast as possible. The drivers wore a variety of expressions. Some knew from winter testing that there would be a struggle. Others expressed confidence that this might be the year for a win in the world's most important stock car race. Hard work, long hours, practice, and now today qualifying. If I think right now, you know if I'm either good or bad. That's right, we probably know you're bad. I beg your, I can't drive, so I gotta do something. Let's go over to Benny. Hey, you almost forgot my name, didn't you, Weber? You know, we don't want to be a big flash in the pants. Well, the driver got a little over exuberant leaving pit road. When I get to pole tomorrow, I'm gonna take a little bit more credit because you're working your ass off. Excuse me. She steals all the good lines. I don't know if I want to tell you or not, you'll spread the word. They're a lot better at this than I am right now. They've been doing it longer than I have, and uh, they just know more than I do. Change colors, change teams, change cars, change doors. We need the TV time, this ain't really how we want to get it. Okay. From darkness to daylight and back to darkness, we have come full circle to tonight as you join us live for a recap of Bush Pole Qualifying held today here at Daytona. Being brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. And by the NASCAR Story. To order, call 871-NASCAR. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins and we welcome you to Daytona for the next 90 minutes. We're going to share with you what happened here today as we establish the front row for the Daytona 500, which runs a week from Sunday. Now, back in 1982, when he was a little bit younger and perhaps a little bit slimmer on this very night, Benny Parsons was celebrating the fact that he had won the poll for the Daytona 500. Remember back then how you felt? Was that today? Yep. Man, was I excited. <laughs> and I, there's one guy that's as excited today as I was back then. We'll let you know who that is in just a moment. Now, Ned will show you in just a moment exactly how the lineup is determined for the Daytona 500, but qualifying at any rate is very important. Oh, it's very important. Uh, even though just the front row is to be determined in qualifying here uh, in the first round, but everyone wants to get a good speed in so that if they, ha if they have trouble in the qualifying races on Thursday, they'll have something to fall back on that can get them in the Daytona 500. Most of them feel if they can get a speed that'll put them in the top 25 today, then they'll feel fairly comfortable that they will be able to get in the Daytona 500. Let's take a look specifically at how the lineup is determined for the race. The two fastest in today's qualifying determine the front row. Then positions 3 through 30 are determined by the finishing positions in Thursday's twin 125s. Positions 31 through 38 determined by overall qualifying speed. That's the point that Ned just made. Then other determinations are provisionals, four based on 1995 owner points, and then there might be a champion's provision available if a previous NASCAR Winston Cup champion has not been able to get into the race any other way. Let's begin our review now of what happened earlier today, just shortly after 2 o'clock Eastern Time, when the first car rolled out to qualify. Dave Marcus was supposed to be the first out, but instead it was Kyle Petty. He finished 30th in the points last year with one win. New crew chief on the car this year, Billy Woodruff. And this was our first maybe indication of how the new Pontiac was going to run in qualifying. And a brand new paint job on Kyle Petty's car as well. You can see the black and red car with some yellow trim. And gentlemen, everyone knew before we came to Daytona that the speeds were going to be down this year. Dale Jarrett won the pole last year a little over 193 miles an hour. And they have some new spoiler rules this year. That affected the car some, but more than that, NASCAR has mandated that the restrictor plate engines can only have a maximum of 14 to 1 compression ratio. And many of them had gotten up to where they were running 20 to 21 compression, which produced a lot of horsepower, but it was beginning to take away some of the durability of the engines. And when they reduced that horsepower, that reduced speeds. And they also took the insert out of the intake manifold between the compression that Ned was talking about and the insert they had in the intake manifold, about 40 horsepower reduction in the power. 1995, Kyle Petty 
started 11th. His best start here was in 1993 when he won the pole. His first lap was 48.651 seconds, translating to a speed of 184.991. We've talked uh, all during this previous week on ESPN2 during our coverage about how the crews and the drivers really relate to time more than they do speed. So for Kyle Petty, first lap was 48.651. And that will not be pole winning speed today. It's going to take somewhere in the high 180s. And we'll see that Kyle Petty will run faster on that second lap than he did on the first lap because it takes two over two and a half miles to get these cars up to speed with reduced horsepower. Petty comes down through the tri-oval and completes the qualifying run. You're right, that second lap was better. 48.440, 185.950 for Kyle Petty. So he was the first out, and so for just a moment, he was the pole sitter. We'll be right back. Back at Daytona for a recap of Bush Pole qualifying today. Kyle Petty was the first out. Then we had a few more qualifiers. Five more cars qualified. We see Rusty Wallace did in fact beat Kyle Petty, 186.062, and there's the other five cars that qualified. But again, we really hadn't seen speed that we knew it was going to take to get on the pole for today for a next Sunday's race. Well, of course, depending, <coughs> the practice that we had seen for the last couple of days, yes, the speeds that we've seen up to this point, we knew were not going to be pole speeds. Well, how about Michael Waltrip? He has a brand new team this year and was set to go out onto the racetrack in the Wood Brothers car. Michael Waltrip started the Daytona 500 last year in seventh position, and he brought the Sitco Ford through the trioval, hoping to knock Rusty Wallace off of the pole. That's the green flag. And we see the Sitco car, the different paint job on that car this year. More orange than last year. It was more white last year, wasn't it? Him? Yes, they had a lot more white on it. There's uh, Michael's brother, Daryl, standing by watching his brother. Michael will qualify for the Daytona 500, and when he cranks the engine a week from tomorrow, it will be his 300th NASCAR Winston Cup start. There we see the reference point uh, going in turn one, two, three, and four. The numbers on the top are the speeds that Rusty Wallace had run. And this is Michael Walter's first lap. He was a little bit slower going in turn one, off turn two, the same speed going in turn three, and the same cut off turn four. Now he takes the white flag, and we'll see how his time is progressing. Well, it was good enough on that first lap to uh, knock Rusty off of the pole, 185.939 to 48.403. That was only his first lap, and uh, if uh, tradition holds true, he'll be better on his second lap. And we can see that he was, because he was faster going in turn one. And even faster coming off turn two. See, 183, that was Rusty Wallace's speed, 182. He was only about three hundredths of a second behind Rusty on his first lap. And as Bob said, the second lap in every case is faster than that first lap. His best Daytona 500 finish was last year when he finished sixth. Let's see what Michael Waltrip's second lap was. Better than the first, 48.051, a speed of 187.301, and that did indeed put Michael Waltrip on the provisional pole, knocking Rusty Wallace off. And we talked to other older brother, Darrell. Well, here's the big brother, Daryl Waltrip, whose brother Michael just took the pole. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, they, they're going to have a great year. Uh, I'm excited uh, for him. Uh, that's a great car. And, you know, when I was his age, I always wanted to drive that car. And that dirty, rotten old Pearson drove it all those years. But uh, that's a big thrill for me to see him in the car. And I, I really hope he does well. I think he hit a real home run there. I think uh, I think he's going to have a great year. I think he'll break the, the victory drought before this year's over with. I'm excited for him and the Woods boys. I'm, I really am. I was spoken with a great deal of enthusiasm. I think he truly meant that. I'm, he really did mean that. <laughs> Here's Jeff Burton going out now in the number 99 car. He becomes the third member of the Jack Roush team. And we might mention that uh, between Michael Waltrip and uh, Jeff Burton, Ted Musgrave qualified at 184.264, and all during the week, as a matter of fact, we may mention in our program today on ESPN2 about how this car was much faster than 
Mark Martin or Ted Musgrave in the practice up to three miles an hour faster. And there's no way to explain that, really and truly. Not really. you got to figure the engines all come out of the Jack Roush uh, shops, and you figure they're all pretty close. So it's got to be in the body of the car, and it doesn't take a lot. At the speeds they run here at Daytona, just a little bit of difference in the body, a little bit of downforce here or there, or a little bit less drag here or there can make a big difference in the speed. And we see he must be a pretty good body on that car because he's a couple miles an hour faster going in turn three than Michael Waltrip was on his first lap. He probably will not sit on the pole with his first lap, but it will be a good lap. And we see off turn four, he's a mile per hour faster. First lap for Jeff Burton was 48.285 seconds, 186.393. And they're using Michael Walter's speed as reference. Burton was the same speed going in turn one. The same speed coming off turn two. Now the last time he ran 190 going into turn three. See how he does this time. Still 190. And that's two mile, one mile an hour faster than the, two miles an hour faster than Michael. This kid started racing at age 17 and was twice Virginia State go-kart champion. Joined the Bush Series and now is in Winston Cup. Second lap was better than the first. 48.021 seconds and a speed of 187.418 and a very good run for Jeff Burton. And it puts him on pole so far. That is correct. Jeff Burton moves to the provisional pole, but we have a lot more to show you. Stay around. Welcome back to our post-qualifying show here at Daytona International Speedway. The pole and the outside front row was determined. Now, at this point in our coverage, Jeff Burton was on the pole, and Michael Waltrip was in second position. Twelve had qualified to this point. With Steve Grissom, we hadn't seen before. Neither had Lake Speed. Uh, Derek Cope back in ninth spot, and Bobby Hill in 11th. And next to go out, 13th in the qualifying order, was John Andretti, the young man who used to live in Indianapolis but has moved to North Carolina to be closer to the racing operation, former IndyCar driver. And John Andretti is looking for his uh, best starting position in the Daytona 500 prior to now, 28th. That's where he started in last year's race. And John Andretti is a part owner in a Bush Grand National team this year that Stevie Reeves is going to run the entire Bush Grand National season. This is the team that's owned by Michael Cranipus, who used to be the special vehicle operations manager for Ford Motor Company, but gave up that position to become a NASCAR Winston Cup car owner. And really a very successful season last year for John Andretti. Well, some of the older fans that might have seen qualifying years ago, maybe when I was driving race cars, we used to set the rear end of the car very high and uh, for some aerodynamic effect. You see how low these cars are now? Mm -hmm. They're running extremely soft springs on them, even softer than they might run at Martinsville, Virginia. So when they go down the straightaway, it'll press down on it and get that spoiler down as low as it possibly can out of the air. Next to go faster down the straightaway. First lap for John Andretti, 48.249 seconds, 186.532. 40 degree spoiler to use this year in Winston Cup? Yes, the, the angle on the rear spoiler has to be 40 degrees. And just like Ned was talking about, now as we go down the back straightaway and that car the air sucks the back down, it will probably go down to 36, 37 degrees. And folks, that is speed. And it is legal too, even though it gets less than what they left with it. Uh, but it does make it go faster down the straight. It gives them handful when they get in the corner though, with exactly. those soft springs. Weather conditions today were partly sunny all day. It was very warm, a little bit of a breeze that the drivers encountered coming onto the trioval, coming out of turn number four. John Andretti's second lap was 48.085, 187.169 miles an hour. So a good run for John Andretti, and he is definitely solidly in the uh, Daytona 500 coming up a week from Sunday. And still, these speeds are a little bit slower than I thought they would be. Jeff Burton on the provisional pole at this moment. Jerry, talk with him. And Jeff, last year your older brother got his first win, and with laps like that, yours can't be far away. 
Well, we hope not. We're working awfully hard. Like I told you earlier, we uh, we just wanted to run the same speed we did in practice, and we came really close to that. So I'm really happy with wherever that puts us is is, is good because we picked up a lot since testing, and uh, that's going to safely put us in the Daytona 500 unless something really weird happens with the weather. So I'm awfully excited about it and ready to go racing. Hey, thus far you're on the pole. Well, <laughs> the problem is it's about 30, 35 more to go, but we're going to hold on as long as we can. There were a lot more qualifiers to go, and next was Joe Nemechek, who finished 28th in the points last year. Jeff Bice becomes his crew chief for 1996. And a little bit different paint scheme on this car, but it's still the same sponsor, Burger King. Good looking race car. Joe's pumped up about the 1996 season with the new people, personnel that he's, he's added to his team and the year's experience that they had with his own team. He likes his chances going into the new season. The 1992 Bush Grand National Champion, Rookie of the Year and Series Champion in All-Pro in 1989. on his first lap, he's not up quite to John Andretti's speed, or I should say uh, Jeff Burton's speed, but 189 down the back straightaway going in turn three. That isn't bad. Not Come all that speed. bad. About 183 coming off of corner number four onto the tri-oval, so we'll see what all that adds up to for Joe Nemechek. First lap was 48.441 mm. and the speed 185.793. That's a little slower than I would thought looking at the comparison between uh, Jeff Burton's speed. It didn't look like there was that much of a difference, but uh, that, uh, as you said, is, is strictly a reference and uh, there's a lot of distance in between where that clocking is done and a lot of things can happen in that area, in those areas. Joe has only been in one Daytona 500. Last year, he started 43rd and finished 42nd. So at least here in the early part of qualifying, he's uh, made some great strides since then. Off of corner number four, and onto the tri-oval once again, about a mile an hour slower coming off of turn four than the pole sitter, Jeff Burton. Second lap was 48.196 for Joe Nemechek, translating to a speed of 186.737. Not too bad for Nemechek. That'll be a speed that'll definitely get him in the Daytona 500, I believe, with uh, regardless of what happens in the qualifying race on Thursday. Jerry Punch and Bill Weber are working the pits for us today. Jerry caught up with John Andretti. John Andretti gets congratulated by car owner Michael Cranifus. And John, uh, a big smile. That second lap a lot quicker coming off the turns over there. Yeah, I guess um, the wind picked up quite a bit, I guess, when we got back there and it slowed us down. Um, from our first lap to our second lap down the back straightaway, but the car was quite a bit quicker through the corner, so came our little Caesars. We're just glad to get a good qualifying run and get starting spot for the 125, and um, hopefully we can start third or fourth in the Daytona 500 from there. Well, a lot more qualifying to bring you. Look who's going to the qualifying line. It's Dale Earnhardt. We'll be right back. Well, since this past Wednesday, when our coverage on ESPN2 began, we have had the honor of the blockbuster video blimp taking the overhead shots of Daytona International Speedway and the dog track, which is located right next to the racetrack. Reviewing what we have done so far, Jeff Burton is on the pole, Michael Waltrip second, and a lot more qualifiers other than that. There we see Dolan back and Rudd. We hadn't noticed before, also Hamilton. Bobby Hillen and Joe Rutman right now are the uh, slowest qualifiers at the moment. 181.7 for Joe. Well, Johnny Benson is getting ready to go. Let's go to Bill. Johnny Benson, a rookie here in Daytona, as far as the Winston Cup Series is concerned. I'm excited for you. Are you nervous at all? Oh, sure, a little bit. Everybody's nervous, you know, qualifying for Daytona. But I tell you what, it's it's exciting too, though. This whole great group of guys here at Bahari Racing to be involved in this deal is just it's unbelievable. How about your expectations in your qualifying run? We're not sure yet. You know, this, uh, yesterday we really needed to pick up some time. This morning we ran an okay time. So we're just going to see. You know, we need to make sure we got a good race car for the race. And qualifying, as long as we get in, we're going we're gonna to be happy with that. With the new Pontiac, you know, we've got some sorting out to do. But the car's got a lot of potential, so we're looking forward to it. Next to go was Mark Martin, the third member of the Jack Roush team. Finished fourth in the points last year with four wins and 22 top 10 finishes. No other changes on the team this year. 
but Mark Martin has been struggling here in the practice. He turned a 48-40 yesterday. That was his best practice speed, but really he hasn't been up to where Jeff Burton, his teammate, is, and of course Jeff is on the provisional pole at the moment. And we can see that the paint job we saw last year at the Brickyard 400 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Mark Martin and the Valvoline folks have adopted that as the official paint job in 1996. Looks pretty good, man. Yes, it does. Looks very good. Mark finished third in the Daytona 500 last year. Had a, had a good car here during Speed Weeks in 1995. And it's a little surprising that he has been struggling as much as he has been. But you can see he's three miles an hour, Benny, slower than uh, his teammate at the end of the back stretch. And this is just the first lap. Maybe he can pick it up the second lap, but uh, I would be surprised if he can pick it up that much. And look at that, four miles per hour coming off turn four. Trying to qualify for his 12th Daytona 500. First lap was 48.947 seconds, 183.872. Not nearly what Mark Martin had hoped for. Wow, man, he's yeah. still three miles an hour slower in yeah. turn one. Yeah, and that's not a speed that'll get him in the Daytona 500 should he have problems on uh, Thursday. And guys, at this point, the weather was really favoring Mark Martin because the clouds had moved over and cooled the track just a little. Yeah, the temperatures went down uh, a few degrees when the cloud went over the sun and that normally is good but we can see that mark continues to struggle this qualifying run will not be anything near what he would like for it to be so mark martin comes down and gets the checkered flag from doyle ford completing his qualification run i would have to call it a big disappointment for mark but don't count him out come race day it's 48.695 seconds 184.824 miles an hour well one of the guys who is a favorite to win the poll here today is dale jarrett jerry caught up with him Last year's pole sitter, Dale Jarrett. Dale qualifying underway. Now, some of the speeds aren't what they were in practice. Does that surprise you? Uh, no, not when everybody goes through that template room and gets the plate from NASCAR. Things usually slow down a little bit, so uh, we expect that. We just hope we've made the right decisions on what we've done here. You're more comfortable now knowing that a lot of other people are slowing down? Uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of expect that. I fully expect our speed maybe to, to slow down a little bit from what we ran yesterday, but not very much. We, we feel like that we're in good shape. Still confident, Dale Jarrett. Dale will be up in just a moment. Meanwhile, here is Johnny Benson, the young rookie that we just talked with a few minutes ago, replacing Michael Waltrip in the Pennzoil car. He's the NASCAR Bush Grand National Champion for 1995, choosing not to defend that title, making the step all the way up to Winston Cup. And this is another Pontiac. And has been invited to the 1996 IROC Series. We'll compete here next Friday against 11 other world-class drivers. So things looking very good for Johnny Benson. And Dale Jarrett mentioned in his interview with Jerry Punch that when NASCAR gives you the plate, when you go through inspection, you don't use a, a restrictor plate that you bring from home that's 29, 30 seconds. You use a 29, 30 second restrictor plate that NASCAR gives you. And they're all just stamped out and it's the luck of the draw. And some of those plates might be two or three horsepower difference. Johnny Benson ran a 48-17 yesterday. You can see that he's a little bit slower down the back stretch and in turn number one than Jeff Burton. But turn number four was the same. Let's see what the lap is for Johnny Benson. I think the fastest lap we've seen on the first lap so far has been like 48-24 something. So we can see Benson about 1,400 slower than that at 48.384, 186.012. It's not bad, but if he can pick up uh, on his second lap as much as we've seen a lot of the others, then he, he will be comfortable that he'll be in the Daytona 500. He ran 186.656 in testing during the winter and was the fastest Pontiac coming in 12th overall. Rookie Johnny Benson trying to qualify for his first Daytona 500. Here he comes off the for, uh, fourth corner. It's a good backstretch speed, 190 in the fourth corner, about a mile an hour slower than uh, Jeff Burton. Let's see what lap number two is for Benson. It's better than the first, 48.171, 186.838, and Johnny Benson is solidly qualifying for the Daytona 500. But Mark Martin, as we mentioned earlier, has to be very disappointed with what happened during his run. Here once again is Dr. Jerry Punch. 
Well, Mark Martin, you picked it up some on the second lap, but still probably a little bit disappointing for what you ran. No, really, that's a little bit better than I thought we could run. Uh, pretty pitiful. We got two of the slowest cars out here and two of the fastest cars. Uh, right now, the front row's sitting there with Roush en engines, and Ted and I are going to be 35th and 40th. So uh, I guess we just don't know what, it, what we're doing when it comes to speedway racing. Uh, I don't know how we managed to win Talladega last year. Uh, we sure don't know what to do. We've done everything we can do, and that's... That's as good as we can do. Obviously some frustration from Mark Martin. Thanks, Mark. Well, Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt. With Jeff Burton still on the pole, Dale Earnhardt was in a pretty good mood, and so was Darrell Waltrip, as Earnhardt was just moments away from climbing into his car to qualify. But up next is Dale Jarrett, who finished 13th in the points last year with a win. Todd Parrott is the crew chief on that car, and a couple of new sponsors on it also. And not just because of you, Ned, but this is the guy that I really thought going in was going to take the pole for the second year in a row. He was fast in testing here back in January, Bob, and has been fast the last several days here as well. Uh, he was really happy with the car, the way it uh, was set up and the way it was running and everything, and, and honestly uh, figured he had a shot at the pole going into this qualifying today. We can see he just, uh, he's about even in turn one. He's slower by one mile per hour going in and faster by one mile per hour coming off. So here's going in turn three. We'll see, and he's one mile per hour slower there. So. But again, this is his first lap. Yep. Looks like it isn't going to be good enough to knock Jeff off of the pole right now, but uh, he has another lap to go. And quite honestly, the engines and everything may not be totally up to speed on these first laps. Well, they, they really get warmed up on that second lap, and you're right. That's hey, whoa, 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 it is fast enough. <laughs> it sure Look is. at this, 47.762, 188.434. Ned, yeah, that is the pole, and it's a, yeah. a quarter of a second faster than... Jeff Burton. And just his first lap. You see there, uh, going into turn one, he was about the same as Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip looked on and looking at the line that they old Jared is taking around the racetrack. See what he gets at the end of the backstretch. Well, it's a little under 188, but still a good lap going for Dale Jarrett, who a year ago tonight was on this program as we celebrated with him his pole sitting effort in the 1995 Daytona 500. The second lap for Dale Jarrett was quicker than the first, 47.536, 189.330, and we have a new temporary pole sitter. And business that? is picking up right now, 189 and a half. Yeah, that's about a half a second faster than anyone else had run. But Dale Earnhardt is yet to qualify. Bill Weber has caught up with the man in black. Dale Earnhardt, you've been all smiles down here on Pitt Road. Good reasons why. You're one of the favorites for the pole. How about your run? I don't know yet. Got to go run it first. Well, you've practiced well. Well, we have, but Jarrett just set a, set a record to, to mark to beat, and I don't know what we can beat. We had not never run that fast in practice, so remains to be seen what we can do. Well, here's the guy who is going for three wins in the Daytona 500 itself. Getting set to go out in just a few moments is Sterling Marlin in the Kodak Film Chevrolet. We'll return with more of our Bush Pole wrap-up in just a moment. Stay with us. Back at Daytona, unfortunately, time doesn't allow us to show you all the runs, so look for your favorite driver here as we show you who had qualified to this point. Dale Jarrett, though, had moved to the pole. Man, 189 point, what, six or seven miles per hour. And that was a little bit faster than he had practiced. He didn't think that he could run as fast as he practiced. But the good wrench Chevrolet was about to roll off of the line and to attempt to gut on the pole for the first time. He's never been on the pole for a Daytona 500, but he was hoping to. Meanwhile, Jerry caught up with Dale Jarrett. Well, Dale, congratulations, 47-53. you got other drivers in line waiting to go, now shaking their heads. <laughs> well, yeah, just, uh, it's a good run. The guys worked awful hard on this car, and, and they did a great job. Todd did a great job of making the calls of what we needed to do, and uh, it, it drove super. You know, we were uh, a little concerned when we got here yesterday. It was moving around a lot, but uh, we worked on it and got it right, and uh, just a great car and a great crew. 
still got to worry about my teammate. He's fast. Uh, Ernie's going to have a good shot, and Dale and Sterling, and, and certainly Jeremy Mayfield. But uh, we're solidly in the field for the 500, and I know that I've got a good car to race. Do you go hide now, or do you go sit on the truck and watch? <laughs> oh, we'll just go talk and have a good time here. So, uh, you know, we've done all that we can do to this point, and, and there's no reason to worry about anything. We did what we came here to do, and, and that was run fast, and we were able to do that. Dale Earnhardt goes on to the racetrack for a qualification attempt. David Smith is the new crew chief on this car. Dale ended up second in points last year despite five wins, second in points to champion Jeff Gordon. Did I hear you say that Earnhardt has never won a pole position for the 500? That is correct. He has started second three different times, but has never started on the front, on the pole, rather, and needless to say, he's never won the race. Well, someone told me that he had started in the top four for the last uh, seven races or something here, and I just assumed he'd had a pole. But he has polls for the Pepsi 400 in July. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, a couple of times. That's right. Boy, he keeps that good wrench Chevrolet right down on the bottom of the racetrack. Oh, look and at this, Ned. Yeah. About the same speed. Yep. It's Dale Jarrett's uh, second lap, and this is Earnhardt's first lap. Coming off of corner number four. Oh, he's Ooh. two miles an hour faster in that area of the racetrack. It's a good lap for Dale Earnhardt. It's 47.769, 188.407 as Richard Childress looks on the car owner. That's about the same speed that Dale Jarrett ran on his lap, so it's going to be awfully close, I think. They equal each other in the first and second turns. Earnhardt going for the pole. Here's Jerry with Richard Childress. 47.7 first time by RC. It's close. That, that was a pretty good lap. You know, it just depends on how he gets it. This second lap around there, you know, how everything heats up and warms up. That's where you pick your speed up. Just cross your fingers. One gust of wind could cost him the pole or the front row or maybe give him the pole. It's, you're right, and we've lost it, you know, on occasions like that. Second lap. Good he enough. 47, 489.510, and Dale Earnhardt is on the provisional pole. Sterling Marlin is yet to go. Sterling Marlin, some pretty quick speeds here this afternoon. Can you win the pole? <laughs> That's going to be tough to beat. Uh, I don't think we can. It's We should be close, but uh, I don't believe so. You know, if we get to all good and hot, we'll be close, but if we don't, we might run about a 70, but uh, they run a real good lap. Yeah. Some guys looking up at the sky here. You're hoping for a cloud. Will that help you? We need a lot. <laughs> so uh, we need anything we can get. Sterling Marlin will be out in a few moments. Meanwhile, we watch the run of Robert Presley, whose new crew chief is the guy who used to be the crew chief for Richard Childress and Dale Earnhardt. Andy Petrie moves over. Let's see what Robert Presley can do as he tries to make his third Daytona 500. This car is owned by Leo Jackson, and the car always runs well on the restrictor plate tracks. And he was uh, one of the top 10 qualifiers here a year ago for the Daytona 500. Mm, we can see the car is bottoming out pretty good down in turns one and two. That's, that's reading for that little bit of smoke. A little sheet metal got against the tire as it bottomed out. Those soft springs on the rear helped to do that. Robert was a regular in the Bush Grand National Series from 1989 through 1994. Has moved up to the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Last year finished second in the rookie points, finishing just a few behind Ricky Craven. Sunshine shines down on the speedway as Robert Presley records a lap of 47.971 seconds. That is a speed of 187.613. Bob, you notice he's not staying quite as low on the racetrack as Dale Earnhardt did. Now, whether that's uh, the way his car feels the most comfortable or maybe just simply wouldn't stay down there, but he was not as low on the track. And you can see that even that first lap, he's currently in third spot. I think if uh, there was a surprise in the last few days regarding uh, practice and qualifying, I would have to say he writes right up there. Well, I think that Andy Petrie going over there would be yeah. no surprise because yeah. he takes a lot of knowledge from Richard Gilders racing over there. 
second lap is faster for Robert Presley. 47.738, 188.526. He stays in third position as of this moment. But Dale Earnhardt has put himself on the pole. Dale Jarrett alongside, but yet to go, Sterling Marlin. We welcome you back live to Daytona International Speedway, where we are wrapping up Bush Pole qualifying that was held earlier today. How about a track pack brought to you by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. Here's Bill Weber. I'm here with Joe Nemechek, the owner driver of the Burger King Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And one of the new things you'll see on cars this year are these spoiler support spokes, Joe. Show those to us and explain to us uh, what they do. Well, what they are is they're, they're a brace that supports the spoiler on the car. NASCAR has a gauge that uh, weighs like 12 pounds. So when you hang this gauge on the spoiler, the spoiler wants to bend. And they've allowed us to put these braces on there to keep it from bending. And it's, it's mainly for qualifying, so uh, so you don't have to start out with 45 degrees to make 40 degrees when you go out on the racetrack. You don't want to miss that minimum spoiler degree angle. Sterling Marlin gets set to go. The Kodak Film Chevrolet is rolling down pit road. But meanwhile, let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch, who's with the provisional pole setter, Dale Earnhardt. Well, Dale Earnhardt, Richard Childress watched your first lap and said 47-7. That's going to be close, and we're going to pick it up. And doggone it, you made him smile that second time by. Well, we just ran the car real as smooth as I could. I was really paying attention to how much the car wiggled and trying to keep it just as straight as I could. And the guys, well, I got to hand it to the guys. They, you know, they worked hard all winter, and uh, the testing was really a, a, a big part of this. And everything they've done, they've worked on focusing on that. And, you got to hand it to them. They just keep coming out here and doing it again. And uh, David Smith and uh, the guys are doing a great job. Now, do you sit back and hold your breath a little bit for that 28 and the four and a few others? Well, definitely. You know, they're all uh, running good. The 28's the car I'm worried about right now. But, uh, hey, we'll, we'll just uh, take it. We'll, we've got to do what we got to do. All right. The next big hurdle will come on Sunday for the 500 miler. Sterling Marlin gets ready to qualify. He finished third in the points last year after three wins and 23 top 10 finishes. Sterling started third in last year's Daytona 500. He was the pole sitter in 1992. Sterling Marlin did have a very, very good year in 1995 and a little bit better year than 1994. If they could get a little bit better in 1996, they are going to be someone to threat for that Winston Cup. That's a very good point, Benny. Uh, their consistent, consistency was a thing that paid off for them last year, and if they can just be a little bit more consistent, this guy could be in contention for the title. He really could, but right now we're trying to determine the front row for the Daytona 500, and Tony Glover is as concerned as anyone here. <laughs> He's the crew chief on the Kodak. Chevrolet. Now he was running almost as low as Earnhardt in turns three and four. I noticed in turns one and two, he still was not quite down at the bottom of that race track like Earnhardt was. So he, Earnhardt's car really worked for, down low. Good backstretch speed, but perhaps the wind has picked up just a little bit, slowing the speed as they come off of corner number four onto the trioval. Marlins first lap, 47.946, 187.711, currently fourth. And that was not nearly as good as Dale Jarrett or Dale Earnhardt on their first lap. He's going to have to pick up a lot if he's going to contend for the pole. I don't believe he can pick up that much speed. That's over a half second or almost a half second he'd have to pick up, and I just don't believe he can do it. The, the most that I've seen so far was Michael Walker picked up about uh, 38 hundredths of a second, and that still wouldn't do it for Sterling even if he matched that. Using the Earnhardt speeds, we can see as a reference, we can see that he's about as fast and a little bit faster going in turn three, so he has a chance. Let's see. It's like it's going to be a little better than the first lap, but I don't think it's going to get him on the pole. Second lap, yeah, 47.666, and the speed 188.814. So at that point, Sterling Marlin could only get to row number two, or uh, currently in third position. But again, of course, the, only the first two positions are determined today. Bill Elliott is getting set to go out. He finished eighth in the points last year. Four top, top fives, 11 top tens, no wins for Bill in 1995. But this guy continues to be, according to uh, the vote, the most popular driver in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. But you mentioned the key thing that I think is concerning Bill Elliott and the team is no wins in 1995. You know that he certainly wants to turn that around. 
in 1996. He wants to get back in victory lane with his, with this McDonald's Ford. They've had some setbacks during the winter. Of course, uh, he lost Casey, his nephew Casey Elliott, who's Ernie's son, uh, to cancer a few weeks ago and and uh, moving into a new shop in Hickory, North Carolina, where Mike Beam and his crew is building and maintaining these McDonald's Fords. Uh, had a tremendous ice storm there last weekend. Their power was off for about four days. They improvised, though, and <clears throat> continued to work right on through it. But uh, he, he has certainly had those setbacks. And you can see that he's not as fast as Earnhardt on that first lap. And it would be hard to imagine that he could pick up that much speed on his second lap. 48.313, 186.285. Remember, Bill Elliott is the track record holder here at Daytona International Speedway. In 1987, went 210.364. NASCAR said, that's way too fast. we got to restrict these cars. <laughs> yeah, we see the run into the 48-second bracket. They ran in the 44-second bracket back in 1987. <laughs> He's a two-time winner of the Daytona 500, taking the checkered flag in 1985 and in 1987. And we can see he's still a little bit slower than Earnhardt, so Elliott will not be on the pole. He can't pick up three-quarters of a second, but he will have a pretty good starting spot in the qualifying races on Thursday. Yeah, and he's got himself a speed good enough that he'll definitely be in the Daytona 500, too. I keep mentioning that, but it's so important. Second lap, 48.019, 187.426. At that point, Bill Elliott was the fifth fastest qualifier of the day. Dale Earnhardt still on the pole position. Sterling Marlin was not able to knock him off. Well, Sterling, you haven't been on the pole the past two years, and that's not been all bad. You've won both of them this year again, not on the front row. Well, maybe it was an amazement jinx or something, but uh, we, we usually line up third or fourth, fifth, somewhere right in there. But I thought I had a real good shot at it, and the car just hadn't run this morning like it has uh, with prior in practice. And I don't know if it hurt the motor. We got it real hot, and uh, if it hurt something in it or not, but uh, we should be in good shape for the race. Well, the fastest car in winter testing was the Kale Yarborough Ford driven by Jeremy Mayfield. He's getting set to go out. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Time here on ESPN, we'll bring you live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the ARCA 200. And we've had some interesting goings-on in that division also during the past few days. Mike Skinner is going to be on the pole for that race. We've been following a kid named Shane Doles who uh, crashed just after uh, the track opened for ARCA practice. He got the car put back together. I think he starts 30th tomorrow, but at least he's in the race. He's 29th, and you'll never guess why we follow him so well, because he's sponsored by Chevy's. Cafe. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's continue our uh, recap of NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying here today. Dale Earnhardt is the pole sitter. Again, look for your favorite driver. We can't show you everybody that qualified in this 90-minute period, but this is what we had accomplished up to this point with still several drivers to qualify, including, as I said, the guy who had been the fastest in winter testing, Jeremy Mayfield. Driving for Cale Yarborough, he finished 31st in the points last year. Only one top 10 finish, and that was in Pocono. Here's Jeremy in the RCA Ford. Would he be able to equal his testing speed during the winter? Another driver from Orangeburg, Kentucky. We have the Green Boys, Jeff and David, and now Mark Green going to be running Bush Grand National. Daryl and Michael Walters and Jeremy Mayfield, all from that town on the Mississippi River. Hey, he's keeping that forward low on the racetrack. And we can see by the sparks that he threw up behind the car. He's bottoming out down in turn one. And he's as fast in turns one and two as Earnhardt. And this is his first lap. Jeremy trying to qualify for his third Daytona 500. By the way, his top testing speed during the winter was 188.972. It's going to take a little bit faster speed than that to beat Mr. Earnhardt. But he's equally he's all a little, little bit slower. at those points on the racetrack, but when he comes off of uh, turn four, it slows down a little bit. What do you do, Bob? Well, let's see. I have to come up here on the screen. 188.802, 47.669 seconds. Tony first kind of happy. That is the fastest first lap we've seen so far. Yeah, Earnhardt and Jerry both had uh, were in the 70s. So it may not be a fluke at all that Jeremy Mayfield was the fastest in winter testing. He could have a pole run going here. Reference to the Earnhardt speeds, he's a little bit quicker than one and two. 
The same in turn three. If he can just get off turn four, we saw the last time at 185, needs to burn faster, Ned. This is such a critical point because how you get off of this turn, the speed that you get off, it shoots you down the straightaway oh. and he's two miles an hour slower. That might have blown it right there. Yep. Jeremy Mayfield picked up the speed on the second lap, but it wasn't good enough for the ball. Oh. It was third. Tony Furr, Guys pretty happy, close, though. very, very close. Well, maybe that will shut all the people up that thought we were cheating over the winter. That's all I can say. I'm just tickled to death for this whole team, Kel Yarbrough, RCA, and all the guys in the engine room and back at the shop, and uh, some of the guys that helped me on the body and stuff. I tell you what, I've had a lot of help from guys, uh, outside guys, sources and stuff, and all the hard work this winter has paid off, and I'm just tickled to death for this whole team. Thanks. The NASCAR Winston Cup champion is sitting in his car getting set to go out. Ray Evernham, his crew chief, is anxious for that run to begin. And here's Ray Evernham, the crew chief for Jeff Gordon's DuPont Chevrolet. You guys have struggled a little bit since you got here. What do you have for him this afternoon, Ray? Uh, we don't really have anything for the pole. We just want to get a good starting spot for the 125. You know, we always race good here. We just can't seem to get a handle on time trialing for the Daytona 500. You know, we, we sat on seven poles or eight poles last year, and, and I don't think this will be this one this year. But we've got a good race car. Our cars drive good. They make probably a little bit more downforce than, than some other people's cars, and that slows them down when they're running by themselves. But, but come Sunday, I think we'll be in good shape. Jeff Gordon, the champion in 1995, seven wins and 23 top 10 finishes. No major changes on that team as he enters the 1996 season. But as you heard Bill indicate, the team has not been quite up to pole speed here in the uh, practice sessions. Last year, he did have a lot of, what he had, eight pole positions last year in that 1995 season then? Mm -hmm. Yep, N none of them were on the restrictor plate tracks, but the Hendrick organization does have a good engine program for the restrictor plate tracks. And it might be, when Ray Evernham talked about how well these cars drive, and boy, they do. I mean, that was evident all year last year. Might have just a little bit too much downforce for a real fast running on these kind of racetracks. But like he said, they'll be okay come Sunday. I believe that. It looks like Ray's got my calculator out there figuring out just exactly how well Jeff Gordon is doing. He started in 14th position last year for the Daytona 5. 500 and his best start was in 1993-11. Look at that backstretch speed, Benny. But look at current four speed, yeah. four miles per hour slower, so he will not be competing for the pole position, but pretty good lap, 47, yep. 888, 187.939 miles per hour, currently in sixth spot. Now that was a faster be. first lap than Sterling Marlin had. Was it? Yeah. Sterling was in the 90s, I believe. That's correct. So maybe he can pick it up and get in the top five. We'll see. Again, let's remind people that the top number is that of the current pole sitter was Dale Earnhardt. And we're comparing what Jeff Gordon is doing to uh, Dale Earnhardt. Again, he's very quick down the back stretch, but let's see what happens as he comes off of corner number four. Yeah, it's about three miles an hour slower once again. So this isn't going to be good enough for the pole position, but Jeff Gordon is going to have a good run here. Second lap is better, 47.723, 188.588 miles an hour. Jeff Gordon, fifth. Welcome back to Daytona. That's uh, the Arca garage that the blimp is hovering over, and Shane Doles is still doing some... Uh, some work down there. By the way, we'd like to remind you about RPM tonight. Tomorrow at 6.30, Kenny Main will bring you a complete wrap-up on the Bush Clash, which is held tomorrow, in addition to the ARCA 200, which we will televise for you. That's tomorrow night, 6.30, on ESPN2. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Benny Parsons and Ned Jarrett. Uh, Bill Weber and Jerry Punch were working the pits for us today. BP. What? Owensboro, Kentucky. Yeah. It's on the Ohio River, not the Mississippi. The Ohio it is? River. Is yeah. it really, Ned? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. Well, I know arithmetic. I don't know nothing about geography <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt has our poll, uh, Ned, and uh, just a few more qualifiers to go, but included is uh, Jeff Gordon, what well, Jeff Gordon we've already seen, Rick Maston, Ernie Irvin are set to qualify. Jeff Gordon, well, however, the defending to series champion climbs out and puts an autograph on the big uh, checkered flag, and Jeff, it, it might have got a little bit hot the second lap, according to the crew chief. Yeah, it did get a little bit hot, but it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, uh, I, I knew it was going to be a good lap. I actually, we're real happy with that lap. That's the fastest we've been since we've been uh, 
any testing, anything, and uh, I'm thrilled to death. Uh, you know, it looked like things weren't going to start out as good as we thought, but so far they've been coming right to us. And, uh, you know, we're not on the pole, but uh, we, we never thought we would be. But there's a couple guys that back there, Ernie, and a couple guys that are going to be real tough. Uh, but, hey, that solidly puts us in, uh, in a good starting spot in the 125. And I know the way that car's driving, it's going to be good in the race. Rick Mass getting set now to go out for a qualification run. 21st in the points last year, three top tens. He has a couple of changes. First of all, he's driving a Pontiac this year, and he's got new sponsorship on this car. Skoll is gone. Hooters has taken over as the primary sponsor for Rick Mass. And Bob, in the practice here the last couple of days, he has uh, had the fastest Pontiac among those. Had some real, and in fact, he was up there in the top five in uh, a couple of the sessions. Not as low on the racetrack as Earnhardt had the Goodrich Chevrolet, but he's about one lane up. But Still pretty uh, fast through the corner. Yeah, his uh, turn speeds there were not that far off. Looking for his seventh start in NASCAR 500 Daytona competition. This car is owned by Richard Jackson, who's the brother to Leo Jackson that owns the car that Robert Presley drives. So I guess those engines uh, sort of come out of the same shop. No, actually, this engine comes from Mike Kennedy. Remember oh, really? the fellow who did oh, the work yeah. for Richard, Ch Richard yeah. Petty for the last few years? Uh, he's furnished the engines for Rick Mast and the Hooters car. Oh, that's interesting. First lap for Rick Mast was 47.982 seconds, 187.570, and that moved him at that point into seventh qualifying spot. And Ed, we can see that no one has been able to get off turn four like Earnhardt. Even Rick Mast is two miles per hour slower than Earnhardt off four. And even though we see some speeds at the end of that straightaway that might be a little bit faster, uh, that speed getting off of those turns is so important. You mentioned earlier, Ned, about how some of the cars are kind of uh, using some soft springs and are low in the back. That thing is. Yeah. Now you can tell using that line down the center of the car as a reference, you can see how much it sagged in the back. All of the cars using those soft springs. Run is complete for Rick Mass. Checkered flag drops. In the second lap, he picked it up just a little bit. 47.751, 188.478, and that moved Rick Mass to seventh fastest qualifier. Ernie Irvin now set to go. Many people thinking perhaps he's the last one that might be able to knock Dale Earnhardt off the pole position. He finished 48th in points last year, but only ran a few races, but made an incredible comeback from the injury suffered the previous year. And you can hear the fans as they were on their feet and cheering Ernie Irvin to the green flag. And he's the driver that Dale Earnhardt mentioned in his interview that has a chance to knock him off the pole. This is the car that's set on the, well, from the team, I'm not sure it's the same car, but uh, certainly that uh, set on the pole here a year ago, just barely beating Dale Earnhardt, I mean thousands of a second. Ernie has competed in six previous Daytona 500s. He won the race in 1991, started second that year. He's got a good lap going. Mile an hour faster than Earnhardt at the end of the back stretch, but a couple miles an hour slower coming off four. Once again, turn four seems to be the spot. The other cars or the other drivers are having trouble beating Earnhardt first lap. Ah, only good enough for fifth. 47.675, 188.778 for Ernie, so he's going to pick it up considerably on lap two. But that was faster than Earnhardt's lap, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was fast. Dale was 47.76, I believe, on his first lap. So that's uh, about nine hundredths of a second faster. Robert Yates has two cars this year, one driven by Dale Jarrett and Ernie Irvin at the controls of the other at the end of the back stretch. Look at that, 193. He is faster all the way around the racetrack. Now, if he can just get off turn four as fast, he might have a shot to beat Ernie. Let's see. Go. Once again, cannot get off that fourth corner. Two miles an hour difference there, and that affects his speed down the front straightaway. 47.527 seconds, 189.366. It is good enough for second position. Ernie did not do it. Let's talk to Robert Yates. Here's Robert Yates, currently second, I believe. Currently second, I believe, Ernie. right now, Robert. Yes. Ernie. What did you run, a 50 or something? Or I, had a, I had a 50 and a 51. My left a little quicker than my right. F 52. Okay. Good deal. I was hoping for 48. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, we've spent more money than you can imagine, more time 
just getting ready for this qualifying. It's certainly going to be nice to put some normal shocks and springs on these cars and get ready to race, but we're happy to have Ernie back. That's our championships right there, getting him back in the race car. Did you feel you had a shot at the pole all the way? A lot of people talked about how fast you were. Obviously, DJ was faster, very fast early. Yeah, you know, I mean, from what you learn at Talladega and you try to put it here and the track gets a little greasy and you put your wide tires on and the things change a little bit different, but I thought Earnhardt beat us about four tenths. I mean, we're just happy to be that close to him because he's, he's pretty awesome. Congratulations, Robert. Thank you. Dale Earnhardt has survived another challenger. Just a few more qualifiers to go. Will he be able to hang on to the pole? Just a few more qualifiers to go. Here is the way things stand at the moment. Earnhardt is on the pole with a 189.510 lap. And we see that the, the Robert Yates car is just 36 hundredths of a mile per hour or something separating those two cars. And there we see Ricky Craven back in 30th spot, and Mark Martin has moved back to 29th. Well, Ernie Irvin came very close, but not quite close enough. And we had an opportunity to talk to Ernie after his qualification run. Well, the 1991 Daytona 500 winner is indeed back. And Ernie, 193 miles per hour in turn three on the second lap. I tell you, you know, Robert Yates and Doug and all the guys, are, they do a great job in the motor shop. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's really not us. You know, it's, it's not the driver. Um, you know, me and Dale both. Um, you know, we're just there for the ride and, you know, all the work that uh, went on this winter, all the guys at the shop, um, it's unbelievable how much work they did. The body guys, too, you know, they did a, a remarkable job. Is the comeback complete now that you've qualified on a super speedway or does it have, still have to come a week from Sunday? I don't know. You know, even next Sunday, we'll, we'll figure out something to make sure that, that you know, the comeback's not complete. But, you know, my, my recollection of uh, when the comeback's complete is where I get back to exactly where I was at, you know. Me and, me and Earnhardt racing for the championship, you know, who, who knows, you know, maybe this year, maybe next year. But uh, I don't think he's going to retire for a while, so I'll have some chance. Well, that's a pretty good first step, guys. Sure is. Great year ahead, I'm sure, for... Ernie Irvin. Here's Loy Allen, finished 40, 41st in points last year with only one top 10. Jeff Hammond, though, is the crew chief on this car this year. And here is a former pole sitter in the Daytona 500, won it in 1994, just two years ago. He's a little bit quicker coming off the second corner, but uh, much slower going in turn one and much slower going in turn three. It's a, it's a good lap, which should put him in position that he doesn't have to worry too much about making the Daytona 500. I think we can discount that 192 off the fourth corner. Obviously, a piece of paper yeah. blew up in front of our trap. <laughs> I think Something that's a happens. pretty safe bet. 48.517, that's a 513 rather, 185.517 for Loy Allen, and that put him in 27th starting position after lap number one. He need to pick up a little bit there, Bob. I think everybody figured after the qualifying had gotten underway there for a while that that if they ran about 186 miles an hour, that that would put them in position that they didn't have to worry. They could go ahead and start setting their cars up on Monday, start getting ready for the qualifying races on Thursday, not have to worry about requalifying again and uh, be in position to be in the Daytona 500 should something happen to their cars on Thursday. Allen comes down and takes the checkered flag, and lap number two was about three-tenths of a second quicker, 48.265, and a 186.471, so that puts him 15th, and that is well within what uh, he needs to make the show. Kenny Wallace, 42nd in points last year, just 11 starts. He's got a new uh, sponsor on this car, Square D and TIC Financial. He really seems to be focused on what he's doing this year, Bob. Uh, when I hear the interviews and, and talk to Kenny Wallace, I, I get the impression that these fellows are dedicated to 1996 to making a go of their Winston Cup effort. They've moved the team. It used to be based in Nashville, Tennessee. It's now in Concord, North Carolina. And I think that will help. He's only been in one previous Daytona 500. Last year, he could only muster 44th best time, and in 1993, he finished in 34th position. 
He's handling pretty well, Ned. Looks to be on the bottom. He's able to keep the car down there. Not quite as slow as Dale Earnhardt, but uh, was keeping it pretty low. And he comes off turn four as fast as Earnhardt. That's the First only one. car we've seen that come off the corner with any kind of speed as Earnhardt did. Yes. First lap for Kenny Wallace, 48.114, 187.056, 13th best at that point. He had run a 47.75 uh, this morning during the practice period, but I don't think he's going to be able to get that here in the qualifying. No, he'll have to pick up more than we've seen most of the others pick up on his second lap if he equals that. And so many times in the practice, it's hard to get a good clean lap out there that the air isn't being stirred with other cars on the racetrack. You never get out there by yourself during practice, and you never know how much help you get from other cars out there. Of course, certainly the closer you are to them, the more help you get. But I think with any cars on the racetrack, it helps a little bit. And we can see that time that he was pretty consistent with Earnhardt all the way around, using Earnhardt's speeds as a reference. Second lap, Bob? 47.861, Ninth fastest, Kenny Wallace, a good run in that TIC Financial Square D machine. On the qualifying line at the moment is Terry Labonte, but it looks like they're having trouble getting that car started. They're pushing it down pit road. We'll be right back. We rejoin our recap of Bush Pole qualifying today here at Daytona. Terry Labonte's car there on the left still hasn't started. And we see Gary Dear talking to the NASCAR official. It looks like they're gonna, I don't know if they're gonna push it back to the garage or they're gonna push it to get it started. Looks like well, they're looks trying like, to get started. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to get it started. Well, in the meantime, let's talk to Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace, you served notice this morning. Your car was going to be strong, and you're now in the top ten. Well, you know, I'm happy for all the guys. Uh, you know, we got a good motor program this year. Larry Wallace came on board at the end of last year on a limited schedule. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank Square D, our new sponsor. They gave us the money that it took to uh, get where we're at right now. So uh, they've done a heck of a job. Okay, Ken Schrader is next to go out. 17th in the points last year, two top fives. Phil Hammer is the crew chief on this car. Labonte's car still has not been able to fire, and so they have sent Ken Schrader onto the racetrack, trying to make his 12th Daytona 500. The 1985 NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year. And he is a three-time pole sitter here, Ned. Yeah, that's what I started to say. Three years in a row he won the pole here for the Daytona 500. 88, 89, and 90. Bill Elliott equaled that. Buddy Baker, the only other driver who was able to win at least two in a row. Well, he's not quite up to Earnhardt's specs here, BP. Well, this is not. This is just the first lap, and he's gaining speed. He's the same going in turn three. Here's that crucial point. Coming off turn four, scrubs off speed every time. Yep, yep two miles an hour. He takes the white flag. Let's see what he did, Bob. We'll see if he's got a chance. Well, it's 187.379 of 48.031, 12th in the line. Well, I don't think he can pick up a half second, over half second, what he's got to, to beat Earnhardt. But he is a little faster down in turn one and the same off turn two. Using 190 miles per hour as a reference. We'll see what Schrader does in turn three. 191. Yep. Yeah. Now, turn four. It'll get him again. <laughs> Off of corner. Yeah, 185. You all right, Bob? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Second lap for Ken Schrader, 47.835. That's a speed of 188.147. He's in the top 10 at this point, but he has his teammate, Terry Labonte, to be a little bit concerned about right now because they are still trying to get that car fired. Battery's dead. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, there we go. He did get it started. Yeah. How about that? Terry Labonte. Sixth in points last year, three wins in the 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup season, trying to make his 18th Daytona 500. He qualified fifth last year, started fifth in the race, and uh, his best start in the Daytona 500 was in 1984 when he started on the outside of the front row. 
show up in the corner as he took the green flag. You just joined us. Dale Earnhardt currently on the pole. Has never won a pole for the Daytona 500. Right now, 189, just over 189 and a half the time to beat. And there are very few qualifiers to go. So it's looking better and better for Dale Earnhardt. But we don't know at this point whether or not he's going to be able to do it. Let's see what, well, Labonte was able to equal at the end of the backstretch. Pretty good speeds there on his first lap. He was fast in, uh, in the January testing here. Was the fastest of the Chevrolets, yep. as a matter of fact. That is correct, at 188.166. So we'll see how that compares with how he does when the pressure's on and the green flag is dropped. Lap one, 187.395, a 48.027, not up to the uh, testing speed, but not a bad lap, 13th currently. Almost identical to the speed that uh, Schrader ran on his first lap. But those cars come out of the Hendrick Motorsports shops. He was the 1984 NASCAR Winston Cup champion, won the Winston in 1988, was selected as the NMPA Driver of the Year in 1984. All kinds of accolades in his corner. Good backstretch run off of corner four, two miles an hour slower than Dale Earnhardt. Terry Labonte is not going to knock him off. Let's see how the second lap was. It was better than the first, 47.779, 188.367 miles an hour. Terry Labonte currently ninth in the qualifying. Well, time is running out here. Just a few more qualifiers to go. We'll show them to you when we return. The Blockbuster Video Blimp is circling over Daytona International Speedway. We appreciate their overhead shots that they have brought us since last Wednesday. Well, Terry Labonte has wrapped up his qualifying effort. Didn't set on the pole, but he had a good run. Thanks, Terry. One more, please, sir. Well, Terry Labonte, in spite of some struggles at the very beginning down there, you still manage a top 10 qualifying run. Well, that's, uh, you know, that, that run was about what we tested at, and, you know, it was pretty good. So, yeah, it was close. So we had a the battery was dead, and uh, so we got it pushed off. But uh, I was sweating there for a minute. Now, we saw you swapping engines yesterday. Which engine did you finally qualify with, the one you had in originally? <laughs> yeah, we put that one back in. It was better. Maybe we should watch a battery change, but, hey, that happens, uh, right? Yeah, that happens. Uh, that's the way it goes. The 49th and last qualifier today was Jeff Purvis, who had seven starts in 1995, but has uh, indicated that he's going to run the ARCA race, he's going to run the Bush Grand National race, and he's also going to run the Daytona 500 because he turned in a very strong qualifying run today. You're not supposed to give it away. Well, just watch then. <laughs> Yeah, he's been fast in practice. He was right up there in the top 10 just about every uh, practice sheet that came out of the press room here at the Daytona International Speedway. As you can see, he's not up to Dale Earnhardt uh, specifications with about three miles an hour slower into one and two coming off of two and about three down the back stretch. Keeps Carlo on the racetrack. Same thing coming off turn four. Yep. Might Jeff. be the first one we've seen that's yes. equal to uh, Dale's speed coming up with. Jeff Purvis, for many, many years, uh, ran dirt and had a lot of success with the dirt tracks all around the country. First lap, 48.241. That's currently 18th, 186.563 miles per hour. He ran a 48.02 during practice, so uh, he's not quite at that point, but still on a good run. Yeah, according to the, the uh, speed that others picked up on their second lap, he's right on target to at least do that well, maybe, maybe a little bit better. Jeff Purvis has competed in two previous Daytona 500s. The last one he competed in was in 1991. John did not pick him up that time off turn four. Let's see what he did. Bob's got it. 47.946, 187.711. Good enough for 12th fastest today in qualifying. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the drama is over. 
And may we present to you the 25th driver to win the poll for the Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt. Congratulations. Sir. Thank you. Yay, congratulations. <laughs> Finally did Party it. Party time. <laughs> for the, first, the first of the first. And uh, this could be our first uh, Daytona 500 win. It's an old one, right? That's yeah, right. it's our first poll, so why not? You're but it has on. been a while since, uh, since the poll winners won the Daytona 500. Uh, we can be a first again <laughs> you know, for, for a while, you know, in the 90s anyway. Yeah. It was back in 87, Ned? I don't know. Yeah. Probably Any? was. Elliot, I don't know. I, Elliot, have no yeah, idea. I, th I think it was when Elliot did it back in 87. Well, I thought you guys kept up on these stats. Well, yeah. we did. Elliot did it's win the late. race. Uh, he ran 210 miles per hour qualified in 1987 yeah. and won the race. Yeah. So. so we know that he did it that year, and I don't think it's been done since. I tell you, a lot of hard, a lot of hard work went into it. Uh, I got to give a lot of credit to the guys back at the shop, uh, Bobby and uh, David Smith, and everybody did a great job with the cars and. Uh, Spinny and everybody in the R&D shop and Spinny in the, uh, in the race engine shop, uh, everybody worked hard all year long, all winter long. So yeah. what are you going to do with Childress next week? Is he going to Africa someplace <laughs> or is he going to yeah. stay here? He's worried that I'm going to have him kidnapped and <laughs> taken to Africa, but uh, nah, if we win the Daytona 500, I want him here. I want him here to enjoy it just as much as we want to. And like I said, it's just been a, a long, hard winter, of a lot of work, a lot of focus. People don't realize how much focus and hard work does go into the Daytona 500 just for practice, qualifying, getting ready for the race. And uh, I know Ernie and Dale Jarrett probably did as much testing as we did and we're so even, so close. They beat me just a little bit last Daytona 500. This year we beat them by just a little bit. It's a hard effort that goes on there. And uh, it's a fine line of, of, of winning the pole and not, and then it's a fine line of winning the race and not. I've not crossed that fi fine line yet. <laughs> You're trying. I'm working on it. You're right. working on it. Yeah. Dale, congratulations again, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Bush Clash tomorrow, and uh, then the big Daytona 500 a week from tomorrow. Yeah, that Bush Clash is going to be yeah. something with 17 cars. Yeah, and, you know, it's going to be an exciting race. Uh, I may sandbag. What do you think? No, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. <laughs> it's not Dale Earnhardt. I'm looking right. forward to, to the Daytona 500, though, and it's, it's been a great week so far, and uh, looking forward to a great week here. It's always fun at Daytona, so that's what it's all about. Thanks for being patient, and thanks for being with us, and once again, congratulations on being the pole setter for the 1996 Daytona 500. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment. Our wrap-up of Bush Pole Qualifying at Daytona International Speedway has been brought to you by the more than 1,225 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. Take a look now at our uh, AutoZone recap showing you exactly where everybody wound up today as far as qualifying is concerned. 49 were able to take time. This is the first time that Chevy has been on the pole position, by the way, since Ken Schrader did it in 1990. Wow, quite a while. Never see Earnhardt, Irvin, and Jarrett right together and may feel good run. Closest qualifying I remember here in a long, long time. Four cars within a half a mile, an hour of each other. We're gonna have some racing here, folks. Don't forget, coming up next is the recap of the Rolex 24 that was held here last week here at Daytona International Speedway. And also, don't forget our live coverage tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Time of the ARCA 200 as ESPN and ESPN2's unprecedented coverage of Speed Weeks 96 continues. For Dale Jarrett, rather for <laughs> Ned Jarrett, for Benny Parsons, this is Bob Jenkins.